What's up guys? We're going to do a second video about this remote bespoke tassel loafer from Japanese shoemaker Ichigo Ichae. And these are made in JFJ Baker replica Russian reindeer. I'm not going to go into all the details. Most of that is in the unboxing, which I'll link above. Mainly, I want to go into some of the more unique details, some of the more unique aspects that Lee and I had discussed, and we wanted to integrate into this order and kind of show you how they turned out. Also, I wanted to kind of show off shine and the finish that I ended up producing on these. I was going to make that into a video, but I enjoy doing shoe care in a much more like relaxed environment. It's not really something I enjoy doing, rushing through it like on a video. So especially for this pair, being that it was my first remote bespoke, my first pair from Lee, I wanted to kind of take my time and enjoy that and do that offline and then share the results with you here. For these, I used a combination of pure polish products as I do with everything, uh, cleaner conditioner to condition, dark brown cream, brown cream combination of high shine paste and dark brown paste. We'll start with going through the details of the upper. Then we'll go through the details of the bottom work, the edge finishing and the welting. And then we'll kind of compare it to what a normal tassel loafer would look like or a normal string loafer would look like. Typically with a tassel loafer, you have a string that goes around the edge of the upper. We wanted to make this a little bit different. So this is a hole cut, single piece of leather. The apron is stitched in strictly from a detail, hand stitched, an aesthetic, a stylistic choice. Very unique piece of this is that instead of having the string that supports the tassel go around the edge of the upper, Lee replicated the same stitch that was on the apron to uh, emulate what that would look like. More of a fall stitch, a fall string that goes around the upper, making this super unique, which I really love. The next part, which is really unique, typically with your run-of-the-mill tassel loafer, you're gonna have a, a seamless heel. Excuse me, you're going to have a seam on the heel. That's typically how they construct that pattern. With this, we wanted a seamless heel to keep that refined look to where all of the stitching is purely stylistic. In order to do that, we had the uh, seam constructed on the inside of the heel. This is something you'll see in a lot of high-end shoes. St. Crispin's is kind of known for this. A lot of the Japanese shoemakers will do this as well. I think it really just brings the overall refinement up a little notch because it gives you that seamless heel look. I'm really happy with how this polish and finishing and kind of high shine turned out on these. Grain leather, embossed leather is extremely difficult to get a very perfect high shine or a mirror shine on, but these took it very well. There's a layered combination of paste and creams and conditioning to really build up the finish with the high shine and the paste polish. Here, this is just a comparison between Horween Hatch Grain the JFJ Baker replica Russian reindeer, which is calfskin as well. It's a vegetable tan leather where the Horween is a combination vegetable tan with a chrome retanning. Not gonna get into the details of that, but just a distinction. Into the details of the bottom work here. So this is an extremely high stitch count on the outsole. I think it's about like 12, 13 stitches per inch. I'm not really a huge fan of bragging about it. I think it's more so just like how refined, how clean, and how elegant does it look. The execution of the slightly more robust single sole tapered down to the blind welded waist executed very well. Fits in with this heavily grained leather. Lee executed the notched heel really well, or at least in my experience a lot of times with the higher level shoes that have this. Sometimes it's more distinct, sometimes it's not. It really all depends on how narrow the waist is compared to the heel block because the heel block still needs to be substantial enough to provide that base that foundation but if the waist is much narrower you get a much more distinct notch at the heel transition but and ironically enough to really kind of dial in the fit on the waist which is really the foundation of the arch support from my understanding we used an example of an insole from Antonio Meccariello because that fit my measurement perfectly. We did my full tracings, we did the full measurement remote process, but I also sent that to him as like a resource so that he could match that up with the measurements that he had with the last that he was shaping and it really turned out that, you know, the more information you give him, the better result you're going to get. With the bottom work is super clean. I love the natural finish of it. It really allows the cleanliness and the refinement of the leather to kind of shine. No pun well pun intended no pun intended and i love the red finish on the waist and on the heel breast it really just adds a little bit of pop that really no one's going to see 
but you just know it's there and it just kind of brings like the sum of the parts together to provide the best full result. Now here's a comparison to a Carmina tassel over. It's a great shoe. It's Goodyear welded factory made, very, very respectable shoe. But as you can see, it has the seam in the heel. It has that string that goes around that actually constructs the tassel or constructs the string that the tassel is attached to. And then you see uh, the actual pair that Lee made. You can notice like the string stops right there. The apron is hand sewn into the, the single piece of leather. And then he replicates that hand sewn detail along the side to emulate the effect of that string going around, which at first glance you wouldn't notice. You'd think it's just the normal string, but upon further inspection, you notice how unique and how different it is, which really Really sets it apart and that's that's the kind of subtle detail the subtle uniqueness that i really appreciate and value in shoes now that you got a bit of a closer look closer understanding of the details what really sets this apart from other tassel loafers out there let me know what you think we'll have some more videos really breaking down the full like life cycle of the measurements fit feedback from the trial shoes and then the end result how accurate do we get that fit that'll probably be the next video excited to share that let me know what you think about this one hopefully you got some more insight into what all went into making of this shoe or designing the pattern for this shoe. Maybe it's even helpful for a shoe that you're going to design with Lee or somebody else. Hopefully you enjoyed like watching it and if so make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, turn on those notifications and you'll find out about the next one. Thanks for watching. Have a good weekend. We'll see you next time.